So you probably just got a new iPad Pro or are just looking for some helpful tips for your iPad. Either way, this video is for you. I'm Envision and I'm gonna show you my top 10 important tips and tricks that you need to know when it comes to using a new iPad Pro M1 or iPad Air. Now let's get into it. The first and probably the most important tip is to use gestures. For those of you who didn't know, gestures are an efficient way to control your iPad. Here are the most important gestures and what they do. So the first one is to view and hide the dock. This is the dock and if you have an Apple computer, you'll be familiar with this. However, when you open up an app, the dock disappears. So in order to show the dock again, all you have to do is look for this gray bar that's going to be on every app you open, then just slowly swipe up. And as you can see, the dock is here. And then if you want it to disappear, just swipe down slowly. There you go. Make sure you swipe up slowly because if you swipe up fast, you'll be on the home screen. And that brings me to my second gesture, which is going to the home screen. So to do that, when you're in any app, just swipe up quickly and you'll be at the home screen. Pretty simple. The third gesture is to show the notification center. To do that, you just swipe down from the top and any notifications you have will pop up here. And you can also clear them just like that. And then to get out of here, just swipe up again. The fourth one is the control center. So swipe down from the right side and you'll have access to the control center. Here you can turn on flash, you can um, send alarm, you can do other things if you add other widgets here, turn down your volume, etc. To get out of that, all you have to do is swipe back up again. Now I'm going to show you how to get a smaller keyboard. So let's say you're on notes over here, you're typing away and maybe this is too big for you or you're on Safari or another app and you just think the keyboard is too big. All you have to do is pinch like this and it will become smaller, which is great. And you can also hold at the bottom here under the space bar and you can move it around wherever you want. Type, type, type. It works great. However, if you want the bigger one again, all you have to do is pinch out and it'll become bigger, which is great. Now I'm going to show you the app display. So if you have multiple apps open, let's say I do open up this, open up uh, good notes and let's open up Spotify. So I just opened up a ton of apps in order to display them all. All you have to do is pinch with all five fingers like that and then hold it until these pop up. Let's do that again. Pinch with all five fingers and then these will all pop up, which is great because you can see what apps you have open and then you can quickly switch between them. Let, let's say I want to go from good notes to YouTube. Pretty simple. And if for whatever reason you want to get rid of these, this brings me to my next gesture, which is force quit. So let's say you don't want to have these running in the background because you're only using good notes right now. All you have to do to get rid of them is swiping up and they all will disappear. There you go. Now, don't worry, this won't delete any of your apps. It'll just stop them from running in the background and taking up unnecessary iPad power. Now, if you want to quickly switch between them, like I showed you, you can either do the five finger thing, show the app display, and then choose which one you want to go to, or you can swipe left and right here for quickly switching through, which is another great feature and I really like. Now, let's get out of here and I'm going to show you the spotlight search. So, you just got to swipe down. Make sure you don't swipe down from the top, just in the middle of the screen, swipe down. You can search for apps like let's say Spotify. It's going to pop up here instead of, you know, looking for it manually by scrolling through the pages. Or you can see your most used apps over here, the apps that you have recently opened, which is a great feature. Now, the gesture feature should be enabled right out of the box. But if you can't do this for some reason, don't worry. I'll show you how to turn it on. So you just open up settings. Then you scroll down all the way to home screen and dock. And then you have to go to multitasking right here and make sure gestures is turned on. So if it's not turned on, you just turn it on. But out of the box for most people, it should be turned on. Speaking of multitasking, that's my second tip. Make sure the allow multiple apps is on right over here. If it's like this, just turn it on. And that will allow you to use multitasking, which is another great feature. So basically you're able to open up multiple apps on the same screen and even change the size of the apps on the screen, which is great. It's a great computer feature that's on the iPad and, and you should really take advantage of it because it can really boost up your productivity. Here's how to use multitasking. So make sure this is on, go to the home screen, then make sure any apps you want to use on multitasking are on your dock, then choose an app to open up. And to add a second app to it, just show the dock by going like this, swiping up slowly. And let's say I want to add Spotify or actually good notes. Just hold it for a bit and drag it to the side. This window, this little window should pop up, then drag it all the way to the left or the right, depending which way you want to put it. And then when this partition shows up, just drop it and it will split the screen, which is awesome. If you want to change the size of the screens, either one, you just have to hold this partition in the middle and then this will, the screens will change and you can see how much each screen is going to change. So let's say I want to make 
YouTube bit smaller, watch videos on the side and take down notes. Maybe I'm like, you know, trying to learn something. I can totally do that. And I can open up a video over here. <laughs> That's a lot. But yeah, I can open up a video over here and watch it. You can also drag apps oops, and just make them take places of each of these. And you can just go back, stack them back on top. Another great feature is you can stack apps on the side of the screen. So let's say I take Spotify and hold it to the middle right here. See the smaller rectangle. This will take a partition of that. The smaller rectangle, when you open it, boom, it's a side little widget. You can also drag it around wherever you want. Let's say I want in the middle. So it'll only go to each of the sides actually. So let's say I want to stack some more apps on top of this, maybe Safari. I can just bring that there, which is great. And you can also just swipe through like I showed you before to go in between these widgets. So you can stack as many apps I think as you want. And you can swipe like that. There you go. And if you don't want this to be visible anymore, maybe you're like, okay, I'm done changing my music. Just swipe to the side like that and it'll get out of here. If you want to bring it back, just swipe to the left side and boom, it's on the screen, which is great. I really love this feature. Let's say I want to change some music and I'm working or something like that. I can just bring that to the side. Don't need any more. Oh wait, I want to change the song or something. Bring it back. And the great thing is if you exit out of both of these, you won't have to redo the multitasking. So let's open up good notes. As you can see, these two pop up and then you can just bring this over from the side and it still has everything you need, which is a crucial feature. So make sure you, you use this. It's honestly a great, great feature. Also, if you want to get rid of these, all you have to do is just swipe up from the top like you would a normal iPhone and then you can get rid of these. And for this one, you can just take this and you can get rid of this too. And then there you go. You have your one screen left here. If you want to get rid of that as well, you can, which is a great feature. Honestly, guys, make sure you utilize this. Now let's move on to the third tip, which is configuring widgets. Using widgets are a great way to utilize the home screen on the iPad. To get the best experience, you have to go to settings and then home screen and dock. Now click on more for app icons. This will make the app smaller on your home screen, but trust me, it's worth it. Now go to the home screen. As you can see, mine is empty, so let's add some widgets. You can do that by going into home screen editing mode. All you have to do is hold down the app. This menu will pop up then click edit screen as you can see it's empty so let's add stuff to add stuff you click on this plus button on the top left and then you can add multiple things so let's add a smart stack um, we can change the size of it let's keep it this size add to widget so this one will allow you to go through different different things which is great so we got one there you can also search for widgets like let's say want a notion widget you can choose the size and function of the widget. As you can see, I can go to my recents or my favorites. And then when you select one, just click add widget. Okay, so we have all the widgets here. You can either drag them up or down to reorganize them. You can remove them as well. And you can also create smart stacks. It's when you stack two widgets of the same size on top of each other. And then it becomes like a gallery type view like this. And when you're done selecting your widgets, you can put them in this box to make sure they always appear first on the home screen. So just drag your favorite widgets in there. Okay, so I have my home screen which is configured. I have battery here, weather, screen time, and my Spotify, which is dope. So I can just hop into a track and start listening right away. Now let's move on to the fourth tip, which is customizing the control center. The control center is up here, which I showed you before, and it's a useful way to quickly get essential features from the home or lock screen. So to customize the control center, you have to go to settings, go to control center, and over here, make sure this is checked off so you can access it within apps. So you have your included controls here and the ones that you can add over here. So now I'm just gonna quickly remove the widgets I don't want and add the widgets that I do want. Once you're done that, you can also rearrange the widgets. Just tap on the right hand side and hold and drag where you want the widget to go. And once you're done that, you can check the layout when you swipe down to check out the control center. Also note, make sure you have the silent mode widget activated since the iPad does not have a physical ringer button like the iPhone does. The fifth tip is for all my gamers out there. If you game on your iPad, and I'm not talking about Fruit Ninja, you can connect a console controller or a wireless controller in general. To do that, just go to settings, make sure your Bluetooth is turned on, like mine is over here. Then grab your controller and then turn on the pairing mode. So for the PS4 controller, you have to hold this down and this at the same time. Let's do that. Oh, look, it already popped up over here. So it is in pairing mode. Mine popped up over here. You might even get a notification to pair on the screen, but it's going to be in other devices, DualShock Controller 4. Click on it and wait for it to pair. Boom, it's connected and the color has changed over here. Now you can play video games in a better way. Just make sure you configure your controller settings in the game. And honestly, playing like this is way better 
um, because there are great games on the iPad and I'm going to be releasing a video regarding gaming on the iPad M1. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe. Hopefully I don't get beat up by this thing. But anyways, the next tip is to grab some accessories for your iPad. I'm talking about the Apple Pencil or the Magic Keyboard or both if you can. Honestly, having these two will give you the best of both worlds when it comes to using an iPad for everyday tasks. If you take notes or write things down often, an Apple Pencil is a must have for you. I have an Apple Pencil and it's amazing when it comes to taking down notes or drawing things. The Apple Pencil is really responsive and the user experience is great. You don't have to get the Magic Keyboard specifically, but you should be getting a keyboard and a trackpad for your iPad. I currently don't have one and I realize that without one, you're really limiting the capabilities of your iPad. That's why I ordered three keyboards off Amazon. One of them is the Magic Keyboard and I'm gonna compare which one is the best. And I'll be dropping a video on that too, so make sure you subscribe. But honestly, I think that if you get a keyboard for your iPad, it will be able to replace your current laptop. The next tip is to enable center stage for all your video apps. Center stage is a new feature that launched with the M1 iPad Pro and it's incredible. Using the wide front camera and AI, your face will be tracked and always in focus in any video call you have. It also works on multiple people, which is amazing and makes it a great and essential feature for video calls or meetings in general. You can open up the FaceTime app and try it out for yourself. Also, don't forget to go to the settings and make sure all your video apps have this enabled. The next tip is about the new Thunderbolt port. The upgraded port on the M1 iPad can transfer data really, really fast, up to 40 gigabytes per second to be exact. So if you're running out of storage, just grab a little USB-C drive like this from Amazon, which is linked in the description, to move files on and off your iPad so you can free up some storage. If you work off external drives like I do, you can plug in your external drive and pick up where you left off, which is amazing. To open up or transfer files on and off the drive, all you have to do is plug it in and then open up the Files app, which is right here, where you will see this. This is a Files app. You have your iCloud drive over here, the files on your iPad, recently deleted, downloads, as well as the external drive that you plugged in. Mine is called the T5. If you want to transfer files, all you have to do is hold the file and then you can copy it, move it, delete it, etc. You can also tap on a file to share it as well. Say you want to iDrop it to another device, you totally can. You can also share it to some other documents as well. Another great thing I like is you can use a split screen mode. So let me get the notes app open. Notes. And then let's open up the files app on the side. And now the great thing is you can just drag and drop files. So I'm just going to drag this into here and boom, it pops up right there. And let's say I want to drag, um, like something, let's say I'm going to go back, drag some, this outro, or let's see if I can drag a video on here. I can totally do that as well, which is great. So you can have your email open on one side and your files open on the other side and just interchange files, which is amazing. The second last tip is to use the LiDAR sensor. I see a lot of people talking about the iPad Pros without even discussing one of its coolest features. So the LiDAR sensor is this black dot on the back of the rear camera of the iPad and it can basically scan your surroundings and make a 3D map, which you can edit and do all kinds of cool stuff with. I'm going to use it to redesign my room. So stay tuned for that video as well. You're going to need an app to take LiDAR scan, so I recommend either Polycam or the 3D Scanner app. Both are great. You just click record and scan your surroundings like this, and then you're able to play around and create measurements and all that kind of stuff with the scan that you have. Obviously, I didn't take the best scan because I was just kind of rushing, but I recommend that you try it out and see if you can get any use out of it. So the final tip is for anyone who has an iPad and an Apple computer. You can turn your iPad into a secondary screen for your Apple computer, which is pretty cool. To enable this, you have to hop on your computer, make sure both devices are on the same Wi-Fi network, have Bluetooth on, and are under the same Apple ID. Once all of that is done, go to the control center in the top bar, then click on the display section, and then you should see your iPad listed here. Click on your iPad, mine is the M1 iPad Pro. Then the circle should turn green and display a bunch of these settings underneath, and the screen of the iPad will change as well. Now you can use this as a normal secondary display. You can also change the arrangement of the display like I put my iPad underneath my main computer so I can just drag stuff right from the top to the bottom. Pretty straightforward. You can also open up applications on here as well. Well, that's all for the video. If you have any helpful tips or if you have a favorite tip from this video, make sure you comment it down below and don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you found it helpful. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.